All right. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. By the way, the way that you guys will log in, one of the nice things about Web1 is that you can access Web1 from any place, anywhere, anytime. And you don't have to have any special application installed on your desktop. It's a browser-based content management system. And once you request from IT the setup of your website, you'll have a portal pagelet that once you log into the portal, it will display a Web1 pagelet. And you'll have a hyperlink to log into Web1. So that's how you'll be accessing Web1. So let me log into our training instance for Web1. You're going to land on a page that looks somewhat like this and use your username and password to log in. Once you log in, you won't see much change from the main page, except that now you're inside Web1 when you see this black bar across the top. I mentioned the My Workbench. We're going to visit that. But this is the place you go if you ever feel lost or you need to just start over in Web1. When I click on the group membership, so the group membership is going to reflect whatever your office is. I don't know if you guys will say president's office, but it will have your relatable um, group membership name. So for us, it's IT, and our instance will say information technology as well. So if I click on the uh, information technology link, this will take me right inside my group landing page for information technology. Now remember how I said that one of the small differences between a publisher and either of these roles is that they can edit the group landing page? You'll notice that as we create all the different content types, the way to edit a page when you view it is through these tabs right here. If I was logged in as an editor or a creator, these tabs would not display, which means I can't edit the group landing page. So that's, that's how you know you're logged in as a publisher, if you see these tabs. So I promised that I would show you how to not get lost and how to navigate right away in Web 1. So I clicked on the My Workbench link button at the top. And what it does is it defaults you to the site content tab. This is a list of all of the web pages in Web 1. So in Web 1, we don't have directories or folders that organize the information for you. It's in the site content tab as a list. So if you have a 1,000-page website, you'll see a 1,000 pages here. But obviously, there's got to be some type of search mechanism to be able to find that one needle in a haystack or that web page you need to edit. So this is where you go. It'll default you to this tab. And this is where you can go and search for specific content or web pages. So I'll give you an example of how this works. It's pretty simple. You can take the field that says title and uh, type in a series of words or maybe just one word. Um, I'm going to use the word faculty because I know that there's a web page out there with a title that says faculty. And the options for type, this is all the different content types that are listed. And you notice that type, this is the same information as what you see in the drop down here. Now that web page that's floating out there, I don't know what type it is, so I'm going to leave it as any. Same thing with Publish. There's three options here. Is it out on the World Wide Web or is it not? Well, I'm not sure, so I can leave that as any as well. And I just want to show you the options here. So if I select the Apply button, what it does is it brings me back all of those web pages with the title that says Faculty. Doesn't matter what type it is. So you see we have a mix of a news content type, a regular page, a web form. Okay. And then published, these all happen to be published, but I chose any. And then this will also give you uh, an idea of who's web, who created that web page, who the author is. And then when it was last updated. So this would be the time and date stamp of when that web page was updated. If you want to go right into the web page and edit it, you just select the edit button. So do you get the idea of how to search for content here? It's pretty simple. Just use the fields at the top. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can create all of these web pages and not release it to the World Wide Web for others to see until you publish it. Published content means it gets out there onto the web. In Web 1. It will reside in Web 1 until you publish it, then it will go live. So there's also a nice cheat tab on here that if you're looking for your own content and you want to go and grab that web page that you know that you worked on, the My Content tab will display. I don't know that I have much information on this tab, but if you click the My Content tab, this will be all of your personal web pages that you've worked on. So you don't have to sort through um, using the site content tab. It will give you a list right here of all those web pages. Okay? Needs review is going to be a tab that, as a publisher, you see. So when people are creating web pages for you, the creators and editors, and it's ready for them to be, they, they're ready for those pages to be published. You don't get an email notification, so you have to come up with a communication plan to your publisher to get those up on the web. And this tab will display all of those web pages that a creator or editor is requesting to be published. So if you don't have a big communication plan going, make sure you just constantly check your needs review tab because that will indicate what needs to be published. The other thing I'll cover, because we are just sort of going over the main, when you log into Web 1, what you're looking at, a file list. Now, each group, so for example, we're in the information technology group as a training instance. Your group will have your own group. The file list is basically one large bucket of all of the files that any user has uploaded. So the way that Web 1 was delivered that is that there are no folders, that no one has their own personal folder for all their files. It does end up in the file list in one big bucket. So there's been some requests to maybe come up with a way to organize the files a little bit better because this is a list of the PDFs, the images, all of those different content, uh, uh, content types. Um, this is, could be quite extensive at some point, right? So we're seeing if there's a different way to maybe and have one large bucket come up with a different way to organize those files. And then the last tab I'll cover, and we'll get right started into creating content, is the Create Content tab. So remember I mentioned the different content types that you create? If you are to go and create any of these particular content types or web pages, you go to the Create Content type and select whatever type you want to create. So Page, which is listed right here, is a basic or generic content type and when you know specifically that you want to create an event or news you would select you know the other different content types so this should get you really comfortable with what to expect when you first log in to web one do you have questions about these tabs you're seeing